This episode was proudly made possible by the all-new 2015 Subaru Legacy. It's not just a sedan, it's a Subaru. Can two brains really communicate directly with each other? Did science just invent telepathy? Did you get my message? Yeah, I transmitted it to you brain to eye, science. This week, a study in PLOS One detailed how two brains were wired together via the internet. The news media went crazy, claiming telepathy, ESP, all sorts of other magical nonsense. This isn't magic, it's science. Basically, what this international group of scientists have done is use a brain-computer interface, or BCI, to read the activity from one brain. They took that reading and translated it into a binary message. Then they sent that through the internet and decoded it on the other end to put it into a different type of computer brain interface or CBI. The CBI then sends the signal to the receiver's brain and that's pretty much it. It's a lot, but hang on, we'll go through it. First, reading a brain isn't anything new. We've been using this technology since the 1870s. It's called electroencephalography. EEGs read the movement of ions through the brain and they become so sensitive so they don't actually have to be implanted onto the tissue. Both the sender and the computer had to be trained first to encode that binary message. They did so by moving their hands for a one and feet for a zero. They did this so the language would be understood by the sender and the receiver. The movement creates a specific electrical signal in the brain that could be picked up by the EEG and then literally emailed to three computers 5,000 miles away. We've done this a ton of times. This alone isn't that big a deal. Usually scientists do this to show that the brain can control a wheelchair or a robotic arm or even another animal. We controlled the tail of a rat once. But in this case, we can't really just beam a signal right into another human's brain. So the researchers analyzed the best spots on the receiver's brains to stimulate phosphenes or little flashes of light that you get on the periphery of your vision, like when you rub your eyes. So when the receiving computer got an email with that binary code, it was sent over to a robot-assisted transcranial magnetic stimulator, or TMS. The robot had been pre-programmed to select the part of the brain that produces those phosphenes in the subject's peripheral vision. It moved to that spot, it activated the magnets, and created the phosphenes. The subjects would then see lights corresponding to the message in binary, so 0100. And that became long and short, so like Morse code. And that's that. One brain sent a message to another brain. Great care was taken to keep the receiver isolated from any other sensory input. They even made them wear blindfolds and earplugs. Now that it's all broken down, it doesn't really feel magical, does it? It feels more like a jury-rigged set of science experiments all thrown together, which is exactly what it is. Io9 wrote, it wasn't the most elegant setup, which is putting it lightly. All I can think is that we could totally simplify this thing, which is really exciting, because this is just the very first tiny step down a long road of brain-to-brain -brain networking. There may come a day when you can control your computer with your thoughts, or shoot a quick brain message to your boyfriend, transmit a complicated emotion to your other friend, or even live as a Borgian collective with everyone if you want. But for now, this is, this is all we got. <laughs> the comments are the perfect place to test out some telepathy jokes. Share them with me, and thanks a lot for watching D News. If you like this show, check out my other show, Test Tube, where we get deep into politics, world events, and other news. Oh and make sure you subscribe.